Hi there. In this lecture, we're going to examine what can happen when you have a pin. Sometimes you just want to celebrate that pin instead of immediately trying to take advantage of it. In this example, in fact, if you try and take advantage of this pin, it's not very nice. Knight takes, there's queen takes e5. Or rook takes, if we try and win this knight here, then queen takes b5. So you could end up losing if you try and exploit the pin immediately. Quite often it's a good idea in your combinations and tactical chess generally to kind of what I call celebrate the pin. The pin gives you a kind of license to go in a little bit more slow motion. You've absolutely pinned the rook here in this example, for example. And it gives you like this slow motion effect. You can do moves which take care of issues and it's the same if you kind of drag the opponent's king down sometimes there's quiet moves you can play it doesn't always have to be flash bang wallop type moves once there's a pin you get a little bit more kind of time and leisure to exploit the situation here i wonder what you would play in this position so this is ralph mamadov against uh Babayev, played in 2008 so um White's play here, what would you play in this position if I give you five seconds to pause the video? So try and celebrate that pin as effectively as possible. Okay. To celebrate one's absolute pin, there's actually, in effect, a relative pin on the night. If only we could shake it away that relative pin, if you need another clue here. We want to shake away this relative pin to be able to exploit our absolute pin. <laughs> the old story, okay. So we can do that with b4 here. This forcing move really uh, helps here to shake off the relative pin. And now knight takes d6 and everything's falling off for black without too much penalty for white after e takes, rook takes. Because white now is threatening also nasty things like this discovery check and mating potentially after the queen would have to give herself up so the f6 knight is also dropping off here black just resigned here in this position uh, there's other such discoveries even if uh, an attempt at the fence was made so say knight e8 uh, for example we could also just win the queen with rook b6 we don't need to go for the mate as well. If there's going to be a knight c7 resource, we can actually sometimes go for the queen as well. So it's a crushing pin tactic. And if we zoom out to how this was a river that, uh, uh, how this arose rather, it was actually from earlier, a very, very interesting tactical combination from earlier, e5, knight db5, threatening queen a7, chat mating. So it was great to foresee this, that there'd be this situation with this pin here. So imagine trying to calculate this lot. And now if the king went to a8, then there's knight c7 check and picking up the queen. So we have this pin situation, but um, if you don't think about celebrating pins and always have this idea that, okay, you've sacrificed material for this pin, you've got to immediately exploit it. There's the fact that you've kind of created slow motion for yourself that you can actually have other options now that you've immobilized entirely a, com a whole piece a whole rook's been totally immobilized so yeah there is a luxury move here without any comeback in this particular position of significance by the way a point of note you might think oh, hold on a sec you might think can't the queen be attacked with knight d7 here yes but you have a great tactic here can you see what white can play, which just essentially wins material and gets a winning game? You can actually just take on d6, it's check, and then take here, and your material up, it's a winning position. And the pawn structure is wretched for black as well. So yes, there is time... In this example, we're kind of celebrating the pin. We're not immediately exploiting it, and this is a very common situation when you have what you when you have these pins. Sometimes you want to take your time over them. Okay.
Uh, so black taking and then the pin just being very destructive. So the principle is sometimes you're celebrating the pin and Nimzovich kind of put pins not just as a tactic but a kind of element of strategy like blockade because pins can be quite persistent for a large number of moves so they're not just tools of tactics but they're, they are actually tools of strategy as well they're so important and to be able to celebrate them you don't have to celebrate them immediately sometimes it's bad to okay I hope you got something from this thanks very much hi guys I hope you've enjoyed this free video sample from this amazing course the complete guide to chess tactics which has become rapidly a bestseller at Udemy with over 2,000 students in just a matter of some weeks if you want to check out this course it really is amazing and there's a discount code on Kings Crusher TV slash chess tactics and you can see my other courses also at Kings Crusher TV slash chess courses but the tactics course is my bestseller and you can check out the structure at Udemy for making decision and drill in and you'll see it has a very very interesting structure of process and patterns and I've also tiered the important tactics to use in your own games and it's tactics which will help you win games and get the most satisfaction from chess there's nothing more painful by the way than being swindled tactically you really want to be on the swindling side if ever you get a bad position at the opening etc it's good to be able to come back at the opponents tactically so this is really a, a course which is a must-have in my view to improve your chess and your satisfaction from chess and your perseverance and general happiness so i hope you do check that out kingscrusher tv slash chess tactics thanks very much